My name is Graham Hilton. Um, this is going to be like probably the least technical talk of this whole conference. There's not anything super, you know, complex, um, like technically, uh, but there is some interesting, um, well, you'll see. So this is going to be a pretty quick talk. Uh, it's only 15 minutes, but so a quick who am I? Uh, my name is Graham Helton. I previously did pen testing, and I currently do uh, research uh, at a security company. Uh, I'm a uh, SAN student. I'm going for my uh, master's, and I'm usually up to no good uh, on Twitter and also not on Twitter on my website. To kind of set the stage of this, uh, has anyone here, how many people here have actually read the abstract of this talk before showing up? So a few people, a few people haven't, so uh, I'm sorry, but this is going to be probably not what you expect. Um, but just to set the stage a little bit, around like late 2020-ish, early 2021, I was in uh, John Strand's active defense class, which is uh, a class offered through Anti-Siphon. Um, at the time, I'm finishing up my bachelor's degree, and I'm writing a PowerShell for a company part-time, uh, just doing like, you know, software, uh, making sure things were up to date, that kind of stuff. So, if you haven't taken a Anti-Siphon class before, basically the way it works is you have uh, like 45 minutes of um, just kind of going through and learning something and then you have like a lab afterwards. So I'm working on this lab and someone in the course discord mentions like, hey, uh, and he tags John Strand and he basically says, hey, John, how is the other John Strand doing? And so it's at this point that we were introduced to our main character of this presentation and someone who I will become you know, very acquainted with over the next year or so. So John Strand begins talking about this individual who uh, is also named John Strand, who happens to be a male model, right? So, this, of course, you can't forget his name because it's written right there. So this male model, John Strand, apparently doesn't like cybersecurity, John Strand, because whenever you Google John Strand, the first thing that comes up is not this model's uh, page. It is, you know, cybersecurity training, uh, stuff like that. So this individual does not like, you know, cybersecurity, John Strand, very much at all, right? So at this time, someone had like sent the link to, you know, cybersecurity, John Strand's book, uh, Offensive Countermeasures, The Art of Active Defense. Um, so I like had this open in Amazon and I had typed in the chat, um, you know, something along the lines of, oh, I want to get male model John Strand's book signed, or cybersecurity John Strand's book signed by the male model. Like, I think that would be really funny. And if the audio is working, I have a clip of that whole interaction. So we will see if the audio is working does not look like it doesn't look like it is but it's fine basically he says uh, like I think that would be really hard to do but basically John Strand has the pursuit and capture of Kevin Mitnick signed by Kevin Mitnick and it's like one of his favorite possessions right so you know challenge accepted like it's going to be hard to do but maybe I can like reach out to this John Strand guy uh, the male model and get him to sign John's book like how hard could that possibly be so like any like you know information security professional, uh, the first thing I did was I go to Twitter, right? Because that's where we all live, and so I figured, okay, I'd find this model's Twitter, and maybe he's like a really cool dude, and maybe he will like get the joke, and he'll think it's really really funny, and he will, uh, you know, be in on it, and he'll be cool with you know signing this book, right? So that's my plan, right? So it immediately gets derailed because I go to his Twitter, and his Twitter is now gone, but I go to his Twitter and. Originally, I had screenshots on here of this guy's Twitter account, but I feel like I don't need to show you those screenshots to kind of, you know, give you an idea of like what, you know, this guy, uh, his thought process was. Just like imagine like the worst possible like political takes and the worst possible like takes on COVID and like all this fun stuff uh, just in like one Twitter feed. Like that is his, um, his Twitter feed, right? And so I was like, okay, well, this is going to be way harder because this guy like doesn't seem like a very friendly dude, right? So the next thing I do is I go to Google, and once you get to like the third page of like the Google search results, you get kind of more like the male modeling stuff and less of the cybersecurity uh, John Strand stuff. So I go and I click on johnstrand.com, which I thought would be owned by, you know, cybersecurity John Strand, right? Uh, no, so I was greeted with a, a nice, um, a collage of this male model's photos, and I've blurred some of these because some of them are like kind of like graphic, right? This is weird, it's a little confusing, but it's not like concerning, right? Except for like that, like I don't know how that necessarily happens. Also, you can't really see this 
it says undefined under it. And I'm not sure if that was like, you know, you upload a picture and you don't give it a name, so it just names it for you. I'm not sure if like that was what happened or they named it undefined. Like either of them makes sense, right? So this is like confusing, but you know, whatever. Like I don't really care what you do in your free time. Like that's cool that he's really into his modeling. Um, so I go back to Google, I click the next, you know, search link. And this is when it goes from confusing. Whoa. Whoa. It goes from confusing to incredibly concerning, right? So, oh no, part two, uh, the next Google search result is an arrest warrant. And I'm like, okay, well, like, what did he do? Like, maybe he forgot to pay, like, a ticket, or maybe he didn't show up to court, whatever. Uh, like, not something that's normal, but, you know, forgivable, right? So, I'm, like, reading through this arrest warrant, I'm like, oh no, like, he didn't, like, not show up to court. Like, he showed up to the Capitol on, like, January 6th. Like, he was there. Like, they're there. Um, and he was, like, protesting. So I'm, like, reading through this document, and I see this fantastic um, action shot of our male model friend, like, in the Capitol building on January 6th. Um, I love this quote, individual broke into the Capitol building and has paid to promote propaganda on his website, right? So not, like, the most friendly individual, right? And this is when most people would be, like, you know, this is weird, like, this is not something I want to get into, but, like, at the time, I was writing a lot of PowerShell for this company, and the number one rule of writing PowerShell is to spend, like, the least amount of time writing PowerShell as possible. So I had a lot of time to, like, think about how I could, like, you know, get this, like, scheme going. Well, scheme's a strong word, this plan in place, right? So I come up with this plan, right? I'm, like, sitting there, like, writing down notes, like, okay, how can I, like, get this guy to agree to sign this book about this, like, written by this dude who he doesn't really like. So I devise this scheme, I like create like fake accounts and I'm like following him on Twitter, like interacting with him with like, you know, fake Twitter accounts. And so I message him on Twitter and my first like DM to him directly, I was like basically, hey, mention that I have this friend named John who uh, is a huge fan of his modeling career, right? And it would be really cool if at some point like I could like get a uh, male model John Strand to sign a book, right? So that was like step one of the plan, right? And then he just sends me his address, like on Twitter. <laughs> he just like DMs me his address. I was like, sure. I was like, what? Not like his email address, like his physical address, like where he's, he lives in like Beverly Hills, right? So I was like, okay, well like that was a little bit too easy. That's a little concerning. Um, but now I have two concerns, right? So I actually need to get him to sign the book and I need to get the book back to me, right? And both of these need to have like kind of some OPSEC involved, right? Like I don't necessarily want him having like my address and all that fun stuff. So the first step that I need to do is I need to uh, figure out how to get him to actually sign the book when I send it to him. And I, I figured out that my best chance of getting him to do this was to kind of divert his attention away from, you know, the security book and maybe find like a decoy book so that he would be uh, more interested in that book. So I, going through his Twitter post and his arrest warrant, I kind of got a feel for like what kind of like literature he might enjoy. So I went to Amazon and I purchased uh, this book because I figured like maybe he had read that, right? Maybe that sounds like something he'd be into. Um, so I purchased this. And I got like a few concerned texts from like you know my family whose Amazon I use. They're like, why? What? <laughs> um, so I purchased this book, and at the time it was. It was like $20, so this $7.99 I'm a little bit jealous of. I guess it wasn't like a great seller. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the next thing I decided that I needed was sales stickers. You might be like, well, why do you need sales stickers if you're not like trying to scam money out of this guy? Like, I don't understand why I need sales stickers. So if you look at John Strand's book, right, in the middle of the book is his name. So I don't know about you, but if someone sent me a book to sign and I got the book and I was the author, that would be like a little concerning, right? That might be like a red flag. So I decided my best solution to this, you know, I thought about like maybe I could Photoshop it and like print out like a new cover and like put a different author or something. But I figured that the best solution to this would just be to put a big sticker over John Strand's name so he didn't read who the author was. Um, and so that's what I did. And you know, what happens if he takes it off? I don't know, I didn't think that far, right? So 
the next concern is actually getting the book back to me uh, in a kind of like an OPSEC savvy way because he is known to like show up to houses like uninvited so I didn't really want him to like you know have my address right so you know at this point like I said I was a full-time student and I already spent like fifty dollars on you know uh, stickers and uh, books and all these different things and so the logical solution would be to get a P.O. box, right? Um, but I decided that that would be too much money and too much work. So I basically, I called my old apartment and I said, hey, um, I have this friend who lives in California and he's sending me some books for college, but the UPS guy, instead of writing my name, Graham Hilton, he wrote Grant Hilton, right? So like common, you know, whatever. And my apartment was like, okay, yeah, like, just tell us whenever, like, he sends it, and then we'll, like, let you know whenever we get it. And I was like, wait, I don't need to, like, prove that, like, I am Graham Helton? And they're like, nope, bye. Right? So I was like, okay, interesting. Um, so what I do is I, you know, package up these books, and I put them in, like, a bubble mailer. And my last kind of trick up my sleeve was to put an additional bubble mailer. So we have, like, a recursive bubble mailer action going on here where we have my my original bubble mailer on the outside with the books and then inside that I have an additional one with my old uh, college apartment address and address to uh, Grant Hilton right so not my name um, but and my apartment is supposed to call me whenever whenever they get this package right so now the last step is I need to like drop this off and I just have to wait for you know my mail model friend to sign these books and send them back right so now all I have to do is wait right so I'm waiting and like four months go by and at this point I was like this is a lost cause like no one there's no way that he's like you know he's like figured this out right so I'm like waiting and I'm waiting and then suddenly I'm like sitting in traffic in Atlanta on my way home from work and I get a call and it's my old apartment and they're like hey um, we have this package for like Grant Hilton and we can't figure out who that is so is that maybe you? Like, this package has been here for like three months. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'll be right there. That's my package, I promise. Um, so I go and I pick up this package and, you know, I like get the bubble mailer and I like sit down in my car and I like take a breath. I'm like, okay, there's no way that this actually worked, right? So I get the thing and I actually open up the bubble mailer and I see the book. I'm like, okay, there's no way he signed this. And so I open it, and he actually did sign uh, John Strand's book. Uh, it says, for John, be blessed, live free or die, signed. I'm assuming that is John Strand, right? So he signed both the books. Um, and my next step was I was going to uh, come to a security conference like this and actually give it to John in person. But uh, again, this was like, you know, uh, I wasn't sure when uh, the next security conference would be. So I decided to get in contact with uh, like some of the people at Black Hills and be like, hey, um, I have this thing to send to John. Like, where can I send it? And they basically said, yeah, just send it to like the office and he'll get it. Um, so I sent it with like, you know, an email saying, you know, basically this is how uh, like what happened. But it was only like a two two sentence email explaining like this whole like year long process. And so John emailed me back and he got the book and he said like, I got it, it's amazing, like thank you so much. But like, how did you get him to sign it? Um, and so this is like that story of how I got uh, male model John Strand to sign uh, cybersecurity John Strand's book. And so that is the tale of two strands. And if you want, I can answer questions. I don't know if there will be time, but uh, I'll be around. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. That's it, thank you so much.